Welcome back to the classroom, everyone. Today, we are going to be tackling one of my favorite subjects and one of my favorite characters, and that is Emphis Nest. More specifically, what are the three strongest teams that Emphis Nest can essentially solo in 3v3? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go ahead and dissect these a little bit. At the end of the video, I'll talk about modding and gear specifics, just so that's clear. But until then, I do have some video here and all this video was taken from my GAC matches or from testing in Arena. I show the mods throughout the video except for this very first match that you can kind of go back and see if you want to pause to see, to kind of compare with your Enfys Nest and with the opponent's teams. So this first match that's going on right now that you guys can already see is Enfys Nest versus Shakti and Clones. This variation is really, really cool. It works with a number of Shock clone combinations. The only one that you have to stay away from is Rex because his aerial advantage will just one-shot Nest after enough turns and enough RNG doesn't go your way. I've done it against really, really low Rex, but I, I do not advise that for anyone. But for the most part, the strategy here is very simple. You do, different than most strategies with most teams, you do not want to kill Shock first. Shock is imperative to creating buffs on the enemy team, and the more buffs the enemy team has, the more crit damage Nest is eventually going to get. And that crit damage is important because if you can't kill fives in one or two hits, that's essentially the match because he has a ridiculous amount of health steal. You also see one of the other really important things that Shock does is heal up the other characters. So if the character or they have an Echo or an Arc on the team, and if you accidentally kill that high relic Echo or Arc, you get a super Echo or Arc that has enough DPS to take down even a Relic 7 Nest, which is what we are using. So that battle for the most part is pretty easy. Next one we're gonna be looking at is Padme. Padme, the team is much more mod dependent. As in 5v5, you have to look at the potency for Jedi Anakin and Padme to make sure you are past the 100% mark. If you're not past the 100% mark, you can use Hoda to kind of catch up, or maybe you can just should just consider another team. Because if they can land a stun, or if they can land healing immunity, things can go pretty south pretty fast. I didn't show it, or I didn't mention it yet, but I did not pass that 10 acid check, so I am taking Hoda, but that is not necessary in all cases. This team, if you're used to using it in 5v5, is a little bit harder to make happen. If you are going up against a fully Relic 7 Padme or Jedi Anakin, and either Padme has a huge amount of health, the number would be 100,000 base health before factoring in her lead, and Jedi Anakin has 8,500 offense, this will not work. If it's one or the other, it can totally work. If Jedi Anakin has a whole lot of offense, you can kill him first, and you will be able to kill Padme because she has less health. Or if Padme has a whole lot of health, and Jedi Anakin doesn't have that much offense, this will still work because then you can just kill Padme first and you don't have to worry about Jedi Anakin killing you. The issue with this team and its difference in 5v5, and 5v5 it's actually a little bit easier because you have more buffs on the enemy team going around and the more buffs there are, the more critical damage you, you have. So you have to be kind of careful with this one. I believe this Jedi Anakin was really high offense. You can see him starting to cut through my protection, even into my health a little bit. So I believe with this variant, I went and decided to kill Jedi Anakin first. And I think that's actually what I'm doing right now. Yep. Oh, I got very close. Over 100,000 damage. And one important thing you need to be able to do to make sure this doesn't end in a timeout is you need to be using Ness first special. Ness first special does a huge amount of damage. Way more than the basic does. However, there are two really big caveats in using against the Padme team. If the character on the Padme team has either Foresight or any variation of protection up, you won't get through them because if they have the protection up, you can't crit. And if they have the Foresight, you're not gonna hit in the first place. So in these moments, it's best to stick to the basic. And now you'll see now that Jedi Anakin is out of this, Padme is just not able to recover enough health turn after turn after turn. One really important thing to mention about this one, though, is if the enemy team doesn't have General Kenobi, let's say they put in a weak Barris or something, like, ah, Barris is using the General Kenobi, this will go smoothly. It won't. You need, you desperately need General Kenobi there. If you do not have General Kenobi there, then he will not take the brute of the counters, and the counters will go into everyone. If the counters go into everyone, Padme will receive undispellable protection up, and Ness can't crit, period. So do not try... Uh, nest against any Padme, or really any Relic Padme team, 
uh, with your with your nest if they don't have General Kenobi. It's very, very important. And the last battle, and this is probably what I consider the most impressive. And these mods are really, really good. This is from an Arena Sharp made of mine. Uh, this is the way he already had them. All of his characters are high relics. His Jolie has over 100,000 health. And I believe over 120% tenacity, which is also converted into crit avoidance. His Jedi, Ma Jedi Master or Grandmaster Yoda is also really good. Decent amount of speed, but mostly modded for offense. Pretty high offense in Grandmaster Yoda, which is the deadliest version uh, of this Jedi Knight Revan team that you can find on defense. And I'm going to use the same model here. I'm going to be using Kira alongside Nest. If you want, or actually if you need to, you can take and hold it as well, because just like the Padme team, if your nest doesn't have 100% tenacity over all the enemy units, this counter will not work. And the reason why is because Jedi Knight Revan's lead was made specifically to keep nests from countering them. Because what it'll do is it'll, remax her, it'll reduce her max health to nothing. However, that reduction of max health has to go through the potency and tenacity check. So you can go back and look at the mods if you want, but this entire enemy team that I'm going here against, they didn't have enough potency to break that. So throughout this entire battle, they're not going to lower my max health in the slightest. And you'll see that. They, I don't even, spoiler alert, I don't even go into the yellow here. So now we've already proc save. We're already starting to get some damage going. One of the big reasons why this works is because of Grandmaster Yoda's buffs. Again, I said it before, I'll say it again. The reason why almost all of these work is because of the massive amount of crit damage that you build through your Ness Unique because the enemy team is constantly using buffs. And one of the other things that I try to do in the beginning of this match is I try to specifically focus on killing Grandmaster Yoda and Jedi Knight Revan so that Jolie can revive them. If you try to go after Jolie first, number one, I don't think you'll be able to kill him because you're not going to be able to have enough buffs from uh, Grandmaster Yoda in the very beginning. And number two, you run the risk. Let's say the, the, the Jolie is very weak. It's a gear 12 Jolie. And you kill him in the beginning. Grandmaster Yoda can hit hard enough back to back to kill Emphis Nest. You need at least one of the other characters, whether it be Jedi Knight Revan or Jolie present, so that Grandmaster Yoda isn't just absolutely one-shotting your nest. One of the beautiful parts about going, using this team against Jolie is that with Jolie's, he gets a lot of crit avoidance. He gets it uh, from his tenacity. Well, the way Ness kit works is she actually gets stacking crit chance, I believe, every time she hit or every time she counters until she takes her next turn. So you'll see, we'll, we'll get to it here real quick, but there is a rather really, really large critical hit landed on this Jolie that, like we saw beforehand, had 120% tenacity. If you are a little worried about maybe your nest doesn't really hit hard enough or you don't have it quite modded the way you want to, I would suggest taking it in a Hoda in here just for the extra, the extra offensive boost. A Hoda can be used for more than just tenacity. He gives tenacity, potency, offense, as well as defense. And that can be really, really helpful in here because you'll see this is going to come quite down to the wire because I don't, I didn't take in Hoda and Hoda can provide that extra offense, which can be very, very helpful. I am working with an R7 nest. I will go over mods a little bit later, but she's R7. Uh, she hits really, really hard, and I find this counter to only be comfortable at the same relic level. This, this is not a counter that will punch up. The Jolie that we are fighting is an R6 Jolie. If I were to be using a, let's say, an R5 nest, this will not work. Possibly maybe with Hoda, but it's not something that I would advise to, to anyone. What I am using mod-wise here is I am using an offense arrow. That is critical. That is, you cannot negotiate that. I'm using a tenacity cross. Also, you can't negotiate that. Either. You need that tenacity to make sure they don't reduce your max health or they don't land a detrimental debuff, whether it be this team or whether it be another team. I have a crit damage triangle. Now, I have not done the exact math on this, but there is actually acceptable ways to both use a crit damage triangle and an offense triangle. There are situations where one is better than the other, and that is mostly related to how many buffs the enemy team is going to be putting off. She also does need a health circle. Her max protection, or her bonus protection, is based off of... Actually, protection up, sorry. Way too many terms. Is actually based off of her health. So that ends up being more important than protection. So you need a lot of health, you need a lot of offense, 
and you need a lot of tenacity. I recommend most people for their nest, if you're starting out, 160% tenacity is good, 170% is better. The nest I am using here has 171, which is really more, is more than enough. For our health, I believe it goes over 70,000, and we'll go look at the offense, again, like I said, towards the end. So now we're coming down to pretty much the end of the battle here, and it's looking really, really close. And at this point, we really have to focus on Jolie, because if you can't kill Jolie at this point, he's just gonna keep reviving everyone. Got a 140k hit on an R6 Jolie. That, that is the power of Emphis Ness. Took down Jolie as well, and from here, it's pretty much over. Oh, a basic or two with, with Nest and Giant Revan is no more. So that is, those are the three strongest teams that Emphis Nest can and will take out if you understand all the numbers. I will show here in a second too a list of kind of scrub teams that Nest beats. Let's say your opponent doesn't set Shot Clones, doesn't set Jedi Revan, doesn't set Padme, which I think is kind of rare with how many teams you have to set 3v3. But if they don't, you can use them against these teams. Uh, Mon Mothma, Newt with B1 is a really popular team as well. Poggle with B1 also works. Um, all of these kind of teams that people generally try to gear in order to be able to get to their to their Galactic Legend, and they just throw them on defense like Phasma. Ness will eat all of those. So that is pretty much it for today, guys. Hope you all learned something. Hope this class was useful. And if you want to catch me before the next video, I do stream my GACs every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday over at Twitch, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will catch you guys there. But until the next time, stay awesome.